Lever Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive super-creamed blend presents... Our friend, Swan, with my friend, Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. now, Uncle Sam will throw his annual forget-me-not party, that glorious little shindig known as income tax day. Me, Jane Stacy, I'm all prepared for it. Income, $2,500 a year. Assets, about $100. Liabilities, Irma Peterson. <laughs> and you know, I'm a little worried. Sometimes the government gives you a refund. What if they send me another Irma Peterson? <laughs> now, please, don't get the wrong impression because I love Irma. But there are times when she... Well, for instance, the other night I came home and found Irma in the middle of the floor with her head on the bathroom scale. So I said, for goodness sakes, honey, what are you doing? And Irma said, I'm just trying to find out if I have a balanced mind. <laughs> Oh, when she says those things, I no longer pull my hair. You see, I've come to know her a little better, and beneath it all, she's a sweet, honest kid who's determined to make something of herself. Otherwise, now, why would she be at the piano as she is, practicing lesson number two, which our dear friend and neighbor, Professor Kropotkin, has given her? C, C, E, F, G, A, B, C. Well, you know, that was pretty good. Good, honey. Yes, but that's C D E F G A B C. What about it? It's such a hard way to pronounce death gap. <laughs> Sweetie, that's not a word. They're just notes. Now come on, back to your practicing, Irma. All right. Do re me L. Irma, what are you doing? It's supposed to be fa. I know, but I always like Al next to me. <laughs> grand, just grand. Don't you want to learn, honey? Well, it's not my fault. Professor Kropotkin was supposed to give me my third lesson a week ago, and I haven't seen him. Well, you know, come to think of it, I haven't seen him either. Gee, I hope he's not sick. Gee, my playing isn't that bad. Oh, I didn't mean it that way, honey. Come in. Hello, girl. Oh, it's you, Mrs. O'Reilly. Girls, I'm worried sick. The professor's been in his room all week, and he won't even answer the door. Oh, my goodness. What do you think it could mean? Oh, I don't know. I'm afraid the poor old man might be very sick. And then again, the deadbeat may have skipped without paying the rent. <laughs> well, maybe he killed himself. Oh, Irma, please. Well, it could happen. A lot of people kill themselves, and you don't hear from them for weeks. Oh. <laughs> Irma, his socks are hanging down there on the line. So what? You know what they say. You can't take it with you. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know what it's all about, but whatever it is, Mrs. O'Reilly, you have yourself to blame for it. The way you've kept nagging that sweet old man for the rent. I nag him? Well, that's ridiculous. I remember Christmas Eve. We were singing Silent Night, and I didn't mention it once during the entire song. <laughs> I'm surprised that you say such a thing, Janie. Oh, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, Mrs. O'Reilly. Well, if you want to know, I'm the one who's been hurt. The way he goes around telling everyone I'm an old, bat-faced cow. <laughs> well, why don't you sue him? He says he can prove it. <laughs> hey. Shh. Listen a minute, everybody. I think I hear a violin playing. Well, I I'll open the window, Jane. Yeah, honey. Huh? Why, sure, it is a violin. It's coming from the professor's room. Oh, it's beautiful. I think I'll accompany him on the piano. No, you won't. Just, just sit quiet and listen. Well, he stopped. Oh, thank goodness the professor's okay. Well, how do you know? 
Well, honey, when a person is dying, you never hear them playing such beautiful music. Oh, that's not true. When my grandfather died, he fell against the Victrola and started the most wonderful concert you ever heard. Oh. <laughs> Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Professor. <laughs> girls, girls, girls. What is it, Professor? Girls, I just... Tell me, Mrs. O'Reilly, since when were you a girl? <laughs> oh, now, Professor, please. We've been so worried about you. Why have you been keeping yourself? Oh, girls, today is the happiest day of my life. Today I have finished my great masterpiece, my beautiful concerto. Oh, so that's what kept you locked up in your room. Sure. To write great music, a man must suffer. And nowhere in the world can a man suffer like in that room of mine. <laughs> oh, Professor, that's wonderful. I'm positively thrilled. It's really too exciting for words. Oh, well, Professor, I, I don't mean to be stupid, but what's a concerto? Irma, my little pigeon, a concerto is a piece of a man's life set to music. The agony of his soul, the torment of his youth, the anguish of his struggles, and the torture of his misery. Can you dance to it? <laughs> Well, hardly. Irma, Mrs. O'Reilly, isn't it just wonderful? Oh, I can't catch my breath. Professor, you don't know how proud I'll be to be able to say, folks, this is the bed in which Professor Kropotkin slept. That's a lie. The only night I slept in that bed was when the ceiling fell on my head. <laughs> Look here, you. No, now, now, listen, stop the bickering, both of you. Professor, come on, play your concerto. Come oh, no, Jenny, darling, not now. I'm rushing down to the publishers now. I want them to hear it. All my dreams are wrapped up in the success of this concerto. Wish me luck. Oh, from the bottom of my heart, Professor. And I wish you luck, too. Oh, by the way, until I hear from you, shall I keep on playing the piano the way I have been? Only if you want to get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, girls, and keep your fingers crossed. Come on, Kropotkin, you mad genius, you. <laughs> Here, what's delayed you? Oh, you had two teeth pulled? Why are you so upset? Only one of them was bad? <laughs> well, Al, I don't understand. Oh, they pulled the one with the gold to pay for the other one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, uh, all right. Yeah, well, I'll tell Irma you'll be right over, Al. Bye. Well, girls, I think I'll go up to the professor's room and give it that feminine touch. Who knows, now that he's coming into the money, he might be looking around for a girl to share it with. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, gee, sweetie, I hope the professor sells his concerto. You know, he's so nice and so honest, and he's worked so hard, which is more than I can say for a certain party we both know. Jane, I don't know who you're referring to, but that's no way to talk about my Al. <laughs> well, I wasn't talking about Al. I wouldn't think of comparing the two men. After all, the professor has created something that may live forever. What's Al created? A long stick with a piece of chewing gum on the end for fishing nickels out of gratings. <laughs> well, that must be the fisherman right now. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hi, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Guess what? The professor wrote a concerto, and he just went out to see a publisher. That's nice. What do you mean, that's nice? Now, there's a man who's going to get up in the world. So what, Jane? Lots of people get up in the world. Some do it by writing songs. Some discover oil. Some wear elevator shoes. But me, got my own way. Got my deals. Oh, heaven forbid. Another of your frauds? Oh, this one is very humanitarian. It's a ticker tape made out of rope. So when the stock market drops, you can hang yourself. <laughs> very timely these days. Oh, yeah. It sounds very good, Al. Don't patent it until you try it. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't mind her, Al. Come over here by the piano. I'll play my second lesson for you. Okay, chicken. I still got Novocaine in me. <laughs> Say, Jane, while Irma plays, would you care to dance? No, thanks, Al. If you don't mind, I'll sit this one out. In fact, I think I'll sit it out at the beauty parlor. What's the matter, Jane? Don't you like the way I dance? 
Well, it, it, it's kind of hard for me to tell, Al. I'm always so busy dodging your feet. <laughs> I'll see you later, kids. <laughs> Oh, hiya, Professor. What are you so dejected about? Al, I'm a tired old man. I went to every publisher in New York, and they wouldn't even see me because I haven't got a name. Well, that's silly. You've got a name. Why don't you show them your driver's license? Hold it, sir. <laughs> don't be miserable, Professor. How can I be happy? No musician will ever play my concerto. I'll play it. That's what I said. No musician will ever play my concerto. <laughs> I'm so heartbroken. All those nights and days wasted. Oh, we're sorry, Professor. Honest, we are. I know you are, Emma, darling. Here, you can have my concerto. Come on, Kropotkin. You old failure, you. <laughs> Poor guy. You know, chicken, sometimes these geniuses don't know how to handle themselves. Got an idea. Can you play the Professor's concerto, chicken? I'll try, Al. Oh, there's something wrong with this piano, Al. No matter what I play, it sounds the same. <laughs> well, forget it, chicken. Hand me that music. A wheel is beginning to turn in my mind. Gee, Al, I love it when you and I are together. Then I know one of our heads is always working. <laughs> Say, lady, when you go out, do you sometimes wish you could be slipping on a soft, fabulously expensive mink coat? Well, if you would like a glamorous fur coat, then listen closely. You have a chance to win one in the exciting Lever $100,000 Fur Contest. Here are the prizes given away each week for five weeks. One $3,000 mink coat, three $1,000 fur coats, five smart fur jackets worth $500, as well as 320 other prizes of valuable furs and cash. Hello? Oh, yes, madam, I was just talking about the wonderful Lever Fur Contest. Prizes? Why, there are 1,645 in all, 329 each week. What do you have to do? Why, it's simple. Just tell in 25 words or less why you like any one of these six Lever products. Swan soap, Lux Flakes, Lux Toilet Soap, Life Boy, Rinso, or Spry. Then send in the wrapper or box top from one of these with your entry. How long does the contest run? Well, there are three contests left, and a new contest begins each week. Oh, certainly, you can send in as many entries as you like. Well, good luck. And, oh, say, don't forget to get your entry blank from your dealer. It will give you all the information you need. Goodbye. Be seeing you in Mink. Well, folks, that's the story, so don't wait a minute. Start writing tonight. This contest is limited to the continental United States, Hawaii, and Alaska. And say, here's a hint. Sincerity counts. Write in your own words. Be sure to print your name and address and the name and address of your Lever Products dealer. Mail your entry to Lever Fur Contest, Box 1, New York 8, New York. That address again is... Lever Fur Contest, Box 1, New York 8, New York. Enter every week. Well, I've heard the news about Professor Kropotkin's failure, and I'm just heartsick. I don't know where he is. I can't locate Alan Irma. But I've decided to do something about it myself. You see, Richard has a friend, a music publisher, named Jed Leeds. And we're in Mr. Leeds' office right now, and he's trying to get rid of a fellow who claims that he writes original songs. And nothing could be cleaner than to see my darling Lena in the morning. Oh, nothing could be better than to see her in a sweater in the morning. Now hold it, hold it, hmm? please. Uh, not what you're looking for? Ha! Get this one. Brand new. Oh. Carry me back to old Miami. <laughs> back to the land of palm trees and cocoa, cocoa nuts. Get it? Get it? Now, wait a minute, son. Ah, uh, I know. I know. You want something peppier. Get this. Just stashed it off this morning. 
Over here, over here. What a year, over here, over here. Now look, my boy. For the boys are shaken, the market's breaking. We'll soon be back to nickel beer. Look, look, boy, boy, me. <laughs> Run along, will you? I'm busy. These people are waiting to talk to me. Okay, okay, but you'll be sorry. I'm going over to Whitmark and selling my masterpiece. Mammy's little baby loves shorten and pumpernickel. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Vienna. Is that his name? Vienna? Yes, he calls himself Irving Vienna. That's as close as he could get to Berlin. <laughs> Now, Richard, I'm sorry to delay you like this. What can I do for you? Well, uh, Jane has a friend who's written a concerto, and, well, we thought you might listen to it. Oh, I'd be glad to. Do you have it with you? No, I haven't, but if you could arrange to see Professor Kropotkin, I'd be ever so grateful. I'm sure he has ability. Well, I'll be free this afternoon for a couple of hours. Can you locate him? Well, I'll make it my business to. He works at the Gypsy Tea Room, and I'll find him if I have to look under every tea leaf. <laughs> Not here, Al. All the better, chicken. Got a lot of work to do. What do you mean, Al? Chicken, just figured out why this concerto with the professors is no good. Why it'll never sell. Why, Al? Because it ain't got no words. It's got to have lyrics. Oh, but Al, do you think it's right for us to mess with the professor's concerto? Chicken, he's got to have help. If we don't mess with it, who will? Uh, I guess you're right, Al. But where will we get the words? Right out of our heads. Oh, I guess that's as good a place as any. Well, sure, Chicken. <laughs> now, now, the first thing we got to remember is that songs like moving pictures go in cycles. They all copy each other, see? Now, for instance, this week it's Ingrid Bergman in Arch of Triumph. Next week it'll probably be Betty Davis in Ditch of Despair. <laughs> now, what's the number one song today? Um, Golden Earrings. Got our title. Silver Bracelets. <laughs> Gee, that's pretty, Al, and it's not too expensive. Yeah. Hand me the concerto, chicken. Here, play these first few notes. Yeah, yeah, all right, forget it. I, I know the rhythm. Now, now, let's see. Da-da-dee, da-da, silver bracelets. Oh, silver bracelets in the moonlight make me once again a youth. For I see the moon above you, uh... Sparkling down upon your tooth. <laughs> No, chicken. Spoils the beauty of the scene. Hey, let me try again. Want to get something southern? Uh, mint juleps? No, got it. Silver bracelets in the moonlight where the Mississippi flows. For I see the moon above you, uh... Sparkling down upon your nose? <laughs> no, no, chicken. Forget about where it's sparkling. Now, we got to finish this song in a hurry. Got to get to a publisher and save the day for the professor. All right, Al. We'll take a different approach. Let's see now. Silver bracelets beneath the sky bring me back a lullaby. Banjos are strumming. People are humming. Sipping tea with lemon? <laughs> no, no, chicken. Need, need a good rhyme. Let's see. Strumming, humming. Only one man who can help us. Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. I'm writing a song. Want something to rhyme with banjos are strumming, people are humming. Huh? Cheese it, the cops are coming? <laughs> no, no, Joe, I'll get something. Hey, Joe, by the way, do you know a good publisher? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Duplicate Dan the Forger is a music publisher now? Okay, Joe, we'll see Duplicate Danny. Thanks. Well, Chicken got the publisher. Only a few more words. Now, let me see. A rhyme for humming. Our life was rugged. We had no plumbing. <laughs> no, 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 chicken. I'll get something. Let me see. Humming, strumming, strumming. Humming, humming. Professor, Mr. Leeds will see us in a minute. Now, don't be nervous. Nervous? Who is nervous? I'm perfectly calm. Who is doing all that typing? That's your teeth chattering. <laughs> Come on, now, pull yourself together, Professor. Here comes Mr. Lee. Ah, oh. oh, I see you found him, Miss Stacy. Nice knowing you, Professor. Thank you. You have your music with you? No, sir, I came right from work. The music is with two friends, Al and Irma Peterson, but 
I'm sure it's perfectly safe. Well, how can you play it? Do you know it by heart? Oh, yes. If I can get my heart down out of my throat so I can get my violin under my chin. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear it. All right. My concerto. My life's work. Mr. Leeds. It's beautiful. You're a great composer, Kropotkin. Do you realize what you're saying, Mr. Leeds? Do you realize that you're saying, I'll be a man again? I'll be able to hold my head up, look my landlady in the eye, and move out of a room that even the mice have boycotted? <laughs> oh, now, now, don't break down, Professor. We're all just as happy as you are. Of course, I can't commit myself until Mr. Eccles, my associate, hears the recording we made while you were playing. You made the record? <laughs> Kropotkin's on the record. <laughs> Mr. Leeds, I hope you'll let the professor know just as soon as possible. Well, if Eccles likes it as much as I do, we'll publish it. I'll drop by your place, Miss Stacy, with the contract and our usual advance of $1,000. $1,000? $1, Quick, I can't catch my breath. Here, here's a glass of water. How dare you? You give water to a multimillionaire, tonight the champagne will flow. <laughs> Well, Danny, now that you heard silver bracelets, what do you say? Now, let me see. Lyrics by Al, with an assist by Irma Peterson. Music by Professor Kropotkin. Well, Al, we generally don't buy from new writers. But since you're a friend of Joe's, we'll make an exception. I'll give you $100 for all rights. You know, buy it outright. Boy, $100! Oh, gee, Jane will never forget us for what we've done for the professor. Just sign that paper while I look the lyrics over again. Silver bracelets on a ballerina in the Easter parade deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> Four hits in one song. We got to click somewhere. Yeah, well, well you can use just what you want. Here's the contract all signed, Daddy. Okay, and here's your check. Oh, if you want to hear the number, listen in tonight at 7. We'll have it introduced by six misses and a hit. Swell, Daddy. Come on, chicken. Let's go home and reap the rich rewards of the joy we have brought. <laughs> sitting here excitedly waiting for Jed Leeds, Richard, myself, Mrs. O'Reilly, and the professor. Oh, the professor's beaming confidently. Mrs. O'Reilly's dressed up like a Christmas tree. She's flirting with him. Now she's fluttering her eyelashes at him. Oh, she's, she's so embarrassed. They fell off. <laughs> Now the professor's smiling happily. He's probably thinking of the thousand dollars. Now he's frowning, probably thinking of the income tax. <laughs> now he's humming the concerto. <laughs> Come in. Oh, hello, Mr. Leeds. How did Mr. Eccles like it? Went out of his mind about it. Here's your contract, Professor, and I have the check right here for you. Oh, oh hello, Jane. Irma, you're just in time. We have the most wonderful news for you and Al. Well, we got wonderful news, too. Oh, no, well, wait, wait, will you hear ours? Mr. Leeds here, he, he's a publisher, and he's just bought the Professor's Concerto with an advance of $1,000. Hmm? Huh? Now, what's your good news? Irma? Al, why are the two of you looking at each other like that? Eh... Uh. We've missed each other. Why do you keep staring at each other? We want to make sure we haven't changed. <laughs> What's the difference? I'm the happiest man alive. Let there be rejoicing, laughter, music. Turn on the radio. Uh, not now. It's 7 o'clock. Uh, and you wouldn't want to listen to Six Misses and a Hit. Yeah, hold it, chicken. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Irma Peterson, what have you and Al been up to? Irma? Oh, you might as well tell the mail. Here, Professor, here's the check. We sold your concerto for $100. What? <laughs> Edna, darling, I know you got a vacuum in your head, but why use it to clean me out? <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry, Professor. We, 
We just wanted to help. Well, I guess there's nothing more for me to say. Goodbye. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, just just a minute, Mr. Lee. Just a minute, please. Uh, it's for you. Oh, uh, thank you. Yes? Oh, Eccles. What? What? You don't say. Well, we found out just in time. What is it? Your friend Kropotkin is a plagiarist. Huh? Our chief arranger says that this concerto was stolen from an old Hungarian heir, note for note. Stolen? How can you say this? Why, that theme? Da, 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 na, 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 That's mine. That's all mine. I'm very sorry, but our man never makes a mistake. Good day. Here's the hundred-dollar check, Professor. A check? How can you talk of money when my artistic integrity has been questioned? Life means nothing to me now. Goodbye. Oh, Irma, I'm worried. He may do something desperate. Come on, let's go up to his room. Yes, let's hurry. Professor. Professor? Please go away, girl. My heart is broken. I'm lying down. No, we're coming in. Oh, don't cry, Professor. But they, they called me a plagiarist. A thief. Well, don't let it get the best of you. Al doesn't. <laughs> But I know it's original. Oh, sure it is, Professor. But these things happen, honest. Gee, you have a hundred dollars, and and you'll feel better after you have a good night's sleep. How can I sleep, Jenny? They called me a plagiarist. Well, maybe I can sing you a lullaby. Oh, would you, Irma? Yes, do. Do you have any special favorite one? Yes, Irma. One my mother used to sing to me in the old country. Well, how did it go? Say, ladies, you'll really like Swan Soap for Dishes because Swan's exclusive Super Creams blend means faster suds in the dishpan. Suds that rinse away so completely your dishes never need drying. And Super Creamed Blend means hand protection, too. Your hands come out of the dishpan smooth and lovely as ever. Yes, Swan Soap is the perfect dishwashing soap, thanks to Swan's exclusive Super Creamed Blend. My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Say, men, how would you like a job that offered you regular pay increases, a chance to reach the top, all living expenses paid, free medical and dental care, early retirement, expert training, travel and adventure? Well, those are the opportunities the Navy offers you. And you can enlist now if you're 17 to 31 years old and a United States citizen in normal health. Yes, serve your country and get ahead at the same time. Enlist in the United States Navy. Frank Bingman speaking. Cakes are light and high. Spry. There's a reason why. Spry. Cakes improve with Spry. Rely on Spry. You bet there's a reason why Spry is the cake making wonder. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the sure Spry one bowl way and be certain of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening has Spry's cake improver secret. For new cake making success, rely on Spry. Pure all vegetable Spry with cake improver. Rely on Spry, S-P-R-Y, Rely on Spry. Tune in next week one hour earlier and listen to the Lux Radio Theater immediately followed by My Friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 